Welcome to the Cleverly Changing Podcast. Our podcast is all about learning how to educate your kids. I'm one of the hosts, Elle, and this is episode 31. During this episode, we welcomed a special guest, Amelia Roberts, from the podcast, The Business of Nursing. Amelia is a registered nurse, but in this conversation, we focused on her upbringing as a homeschool graduate who went on to college and is achieving her dreams. If you find yourself homeschooling for whatever reason, this is an episode that you'll need to hear. If you're a new listener to our podcast, I'd like to thank you for joining us. I am an entrepreneur, a mom to twin girls, and this podcast is not only for parents who homeschool their children, but it is also for parents who want to supplement their child's education. Our goal is to provide you with encouragement, insight about African history, and support as a parent and home educator. New episodes are uploaded bi-weekly, so please remember to subscribe and share. If you want to keep this podcast going, and we want you to, please consider supporting it by donating to our Patreon page at a low monthly cost. Visit patreon.com slash cleverly changing. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot C-O-M slash C-L-E-V-E-R-L-Y-C-H-A-N-G-I-N-G. Thank you in advance. Today's African proverb is, birds sing not because they have answers, but because they have songs. It's now time for the word of the episode. Dun, dun. Today's word of the episode is brought to you by the Yoruba language. Oju. Oju means eyes. This is Cleverly Cultured Kids. All right, we have an exciting interview for you. We are talking to young Matthew. Matthew, can you tell us how old you are? I'm 12 today. Uh, My birthday is April 3rd. Happy birthday to you. So this is so cool. You get to do an interview on your birthday. Can you tell us about Like, what grade are you in? Because I know some homeschoolers don't necessarily consider themselves in a grade, but what grade are you in? Seven. Okay, very cool. I know that you have a favorite subject in school. What is your favorite subject? Um, law. Very cool. Do you think you want to grow up to be a lawyer? What kind of intrigues you about law? Well, the fact that you can help people and or prosecute them for things they did or help them out in things that they didn't do. And yeah, that's pretty much what intrigues me. I like how you can help people and I want to be a judge. Very cool. Have you ever had experience with law, like taking a class? And can you tell us a little bit about the class and what that entailed? Yes, we did a law class at our co-op and we actually did a few mock trials. Um, One was Goldilocks. And I don't remember the other one, but it was Goldilocks, and then it was another story. Uh, I don't remember that one. All right. Can you tell us a little bit about what part you played in the Goldilocks um, trial? Yes, I was the judge. Did you have a gavel? No, not necessarily. Um, The teacher left it at her home, so... We actually used a toy hammer that squeaked every time you hit it, so that was funny. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Was Goldilocks acquitted or was she prosecuted? She was acquitted. 
thanks to most of the parents. So what role did the parents play? Were they the jury or? They were the jury, but they didn't stand in the, the, the place where the jury stands. They were just in the back. And then how they decided that was they got handed out paper that was she guilty? Did she, was she breaking or entering? And did she disrupt property? And most of them said no to all of them. So that's how Goldilocks got out. Very cool. What other things do you like about homeschooling? Well, the fact that you don't have to worry about not being able to go to school one day because of something like coronavirus or self-quarantine and stuff like that. And um, the fact that you can learn at your own pace and the fact that you don't have to the risk of bullying and stuff like that. So I know that you have younger siblings who are also homeschooled. You have, how old are your siblings? Um, they're through the age, um, I have one older brother and I have, all the other ones are younger than that. Um, eight, six, four, and one. Those are the ages. Do you help them out with their homeschool? Yes. Um, every day we read them a book, and I help them with their math and their language spelling, writing, things like that. Very cool. Do you have any advice for families who are homeschooling? Well, if you get frustrated on a topic, don't sit there and get more frustrated of why you're frustrated. Um, stand up, get your blood ro fl rowing, flowing, and get some fresh air. Okay. So I know that you have been helping your younger siblings with their schoolwork and reading them books and things like that. How does that help you as a person? Like, does, does the review help kind of um, help you hone your skills and um, practice and things like that? Yes, you're basically re-quizzing yourself, um, so you can remember things like, I did a Greek class, so they did the Greek class with me, so what I did was I um, helped them with theirs, but then I quiz. I was basically quizzing myself while I teach them. Okay, so Greek class? I haven't heard about a uh, homeschool Greek class. That sounds very cool. Can you tell us a little bit about the class, and if you know any of the words, can you share that with us? Yes, um, well, our, the pastor of the church teaches it, and I have a lot of friends that go to it. We're learning Biblical Greek, and we're learning the alphabet, and then we're learning a few verses in the Bible, and we're learning how to translate from Greek to English. I know a few words, alpha, beta, gamma, iota, delta, zeta, eta, theta, kappa, lambda, those are all parts of the alphabet. And they were also learning the symbols and how to write them. Okay, that is very incredible. I think, you know, a lot of kids don't have an opportunity to take a Greek class. And I'm sure if they got to, it would be pretty cool. I know that right now we are experiencing kind of like a different time because of coronavirus and a lot of the classes that you would normally take at a co-op you're having to take via zoom or at home how is that different for you and how are you enjoying it well i'm enjoying it by the fact that i don't have to risk getting anybody else sick or anything like that and they don't have they don't have i don't have the risk of getting sick myself i also like because you can do it anytime, and you can take multiple classes. And um, lots of my younger siblings actually do Zoom classes too. And the reason it's a little, it's not really that different for me because I still do Zoom classes at home sometimes before COVID-19. Oh, very cool. What class did you take before this that was a Zoom class? Um, I did... How to do checking accounts. I did a art class. Is he, is he fucking fine about me? 
also did I also did a class on doing vectors, which is it's like Canva but uh harder. And we learned how to do vectors and things like that. Okay, that sounds very cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge about homeschooling and just telling us about your experience. We really appreciate it. Is there something that you would want people who are interested in homeschooling to know about the overall homeschool experience? It's great for people, for parents who don't work, and are at home, and it's great for kids who um, have disabilities or that are being bullied or things like in that nature. Do you think that all parents who homeschool don't work? No, no, no. no. <laughs> my dad is a pastor, and my mom was a respiratory therapist. Okay, so so normally parents definitely yeah. work, and they can still work and yeah. homeschool at the same time. Yeah, like um, online work. Uh, one of my uncles is a graphic designer, and I know a few other p- p- kids who are homeschooled. Their parents um, are graphic designers and different things like that. So does your uncle homeschool his kids too? Yes. Oh, cool. So you have a family that homeschools? Yes. Well, that that helps you feel like it's not weird or strange because other people do it too, right? Yeah, it it actually it's helpful because then you don't have to feel like weirded out when you see your cousins and they're like, "Oh, you guys are homeschooled and things like that. Wow, that's very cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing your experience and we hope you have a fabulous school year and we wish you well thank you and bye bye welcome to the cleverly changing podcast we are excited to have a new guest who actually has a homeschool background and we really want to learn more about people who were homeschooled and their next um, transition into adulthood and really what happens next after homeschool so that is what our conversation today will center around We have a special guest, and her name is Amelia Roberts. I actually would love for her to introduce herself to you so that you can get to know who she is. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me. Um, Yeah, so my background is homeschooling. Uh, I started homeschooling from age 14 until I graduated, and that definitely helped me with the different things that I've done today. Um, I have a few different hats. I'm a visibility expert. Uh, People help hire me to get them on podcasts, virtual summits and stuff in the digital world and local stages and whatnot. And that's a side hustle. I also wear a hat of being a healthcare professional. So um, during the week, uh, you can find me at a local hospital um, helping to navigate families through the healthcare system. Incredible. That's very awesome. So you say that you have a homeschool background, and I know that, um, can you tell us a little bit about how long you were homeschooled and what that entailed? Sure, so starting around middle school, I believe age 14, uh, maybe 13, I had health issues that came up and keeping a regular schedule was challenging and various things came up and my mom thought it would be best for me to start homeschooling. And she also noticed during the summers, during the summers is when I really came back. And I'm an introvert, I still am, I was back then, I would take lunch in middle school lunch in the high, in the a middle school library just to recoup and gather myself again to take on the rest of the school day. And just that and other things, my mom noticed that, you know what, it would probably be best for me to be in a homeschool environment. Okay. So that that is pretty incredible. What were some of your best moments as a homeschool student? Can you describe like one experience that kind of really stood out to you? Um, I think early on, uh, the fact that my mother gave me the ability to control my own environment, um, that opened up a a world of possibilities and 
that I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say that there was just one thing, but just being able to be in a space where uh, I had control over my energy and even my schoolwork that had interesting things. I mean, my first summer, actually my first two summers homeschooling, I had to work through the summer because I, <laughs> I had the work didn't go anywhere. It wasn't like, you know, regular school. If you don't do well, you know, you keep getting passed. If you don't do well, well, or if you don't do work, the work's still there the next day. So um, anyway, it helped me figure out time management. So maybe that's the next thing. Uh, it really gave me the gift of figuring out time management and the gift of figuring out how to access resources very early on. And that's something that has helped me in my professional career, in my business, in lots of different ways. So maybe those two things, time management and controlling my um, space and emotional energy. That's terrific. <laughs> I know many adults who are still trying to um, really get a grasp on both of those things. Um, now, just, uh, you know, it's easy to procrastinate and being a self-motivator is valuable. So it's wonderful to hear that that was one of the things that really stood out to you. Yeah. So I feel like you, you kind of touched on it, but what would you say is some of your greatest strengths? Um, outside of um, the time management and, you know, self-paced and, you know, being, a, being able to access resources. I feel like those are definitely two things that are kind of a common thread with many homeschoolers. But is there any strength outside of that? Because one of the things, um, you know, there are some criticisms, I guess, that people sometimes associate with homeschool, like socially. Um, do you feel like you gained any social strengths from being homeschooled? Um, I think so. So it's so funny. Um, in my circles nowadays, people call me a B2B matchmaker. They call me a super connector. They say if you, um, you know, if you need a connection or need to meet somebody or blah, 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 you need to know Amelia. And I think being a super connector sort of formed out of that because I've always been super interested in um, how, in patterns, um, patterns, how things fit together, how people fit together, how people help one another, how people can help one another, um, who would be most helpful. So like that sort of thing has, I've always been interested in. And I had, and I care about people. I mean, I take relationships seriously because, um, again, I am an introvert. So the energy that I spend on people, I can't, I mean, I can't spend a ton of energy on a ton of different people. So the folks that I can spend energy on, I value them. And I'm always curious about how I can help. And that curiosity of how people fit in together has um, definitely enhanced my life professionally and as a business owner, as people come to me needing introductions, needing connections, needing, um, yeah, needing to um, be connected with people who can further their mission along. Yeah. So I, I want to say um, I've definitely benefited from, from your connections. Um, you, you, I feel like you tagged me in an article. Someone was looking for somebody that had a relationship with sickle cell anemia and you tagged me and I was able to be in an article. So it's wow. definitely something oh, that gosh. I can, I can say I've benefited <laughs> from that particular um, relationship. So I know firsthand that you are great at connecting people. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I didn't know that, but yeah, it makes me super excited. Um, there's a quote and I'll probably leave it someplace or I give it to you, but it says that um, pretty much opportunities are not clouds floating, floating in the sky. Um, opportunities are attached to humans. And anytime we need something new or different, it's usually a human that we need in our life. Hmm. I love that. I love that because in a digital age, we often put a lot on AI and we put a lot of stock into what robots are doing for us. But it's really those relationships that often um, cement deals. They may not always be the ones to get us in the door, but they definitely can. But when someone wants to work with you, when they want to give you money, when they want to see your business flourish, it's because of those relationships. So what you said is def definitely um, the truth. So I love that quote. So my next question is, um, you, you've mentioned that your mom homeschooled you. Was she, um, 
the primary teacher or how did that particular, how did it look? Did you do maybe a program with the school, something um, like computer-based? Can you kind of describe that? Sure. So she was the, yeah, she was the primary person. Um, in middle school, we did Calvert School. I don't know if they're still around. And then in high school, it was self-study by American school. So um, during, I, I remember, so during um, subjects that were particularly challenging, like algebra, um, speaking of having networks that were helpful, there was somebody in our family's network who was a, um, a professor at actually Howard University. And she was, um, oh my goodness, she was a lifesaver for algebra. And um, that was like the main thing that was, you know, of a challenge to me. So yeah, my mom was, the, she also worked, like I want to say she worked part-time. So she wasn't necessarily there 24 um, seven, but I also had my grandma who was close by, um, going back to having a network that's helpful. My grandma lives a couple streets up. So, and she was a former teacher. So as far as um, helping to provide structure, I didn't necessarily of course have all the structure of my own at 14, definitely had um, figures in place to help provide that. I love that you just brought that up because in my experience, this is my sixth year homeschooling my children and you have to have support. Yes. It doesn't have to be, all of your support doesn't have to be within your house, but in order for you to feel successful and to be able to continue, you need to have some sort of support network. And I love that, um, you know, your mom was able to do it with support from a grandparent. So our, I think parents who want to homeschool sometimes have to think outside of um, traditional models of support. It doesn't have to be um, another parent. It doesn't have to be um, a friend. It could literally anybody in your circle who's willing to help and you have that trusting relationship with, they can provide support. And so I think it was just an added bonus that your grandmother had um, an education background to help, you know, you your mom probably felt even more comfortable being able to partner with her because it was probably like a partnership in, of sorts. Yes, yes. I mean, it wasn't definitely, it wasn't my grandmother teaching me biology or anything like that. Um, definitely the curriculums are such, especially nowadays, I would imagine 20 years later, we're talking pretty much, um, are such that, you know, you have more access to the schools. Um, or, and you probably do have that probably you have lots of online resources and I'm sure there's lots of um, other support nowadays than we also had back then. So, um, right. yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's terrific. So every day in homeschool isn't all roses and just greatness. Do you have an experience in your past that you would say, you know, this was a challenging part of homeschooling, but, you know, we, we overcame it. So what was challenging about your homeschool experience and how did you overcome it? So um, I will list a challenge that might happen for, I want to say, I don't want to say normal kids, but other kids, and then I'll share something that was challenging for me. So for other kids, what could be a challenge, I would imagine would be um, isolation and being with other kids. Um, I did have a homeschool support group that did, and they were called SEEK at the time. I think they are still around, but um, I did have a homeschool support group that did activities and field trips and went into DC and did different things. I think they even brought in teachers to do art projects and whatnot. So um, that could be a challenge for some, but that's how that was resolved. And that was something that was also in my life. And also um, I was involved with volunteering, um, Bible education, and um, that also took up um, the social interaction piece and helped foster that. Um, a challenge challenge for me was, again, school and math, um, math in particular. In high school, I think I spent an entire year on algebra. <laughs> um, it wasn't, I mean, and it's not supposed to take an entire year, but it was just, you know, when you, with the program I was in, if you didn't pass the test, unlike the school system where you, there, you can get just pushed through 
eventually and still not know the thing. Um, with homeschooling, there was no pushing through. You just have to pass. You have to do what you need to do to pass. And I just wasn't. So, you know, we brought in help, but it, that took a long time. And, um, but, you know, fortunately, things worked out. You know, I eventually, you know, when I did go to college, I didn't have to, um, you know, spend a whole lot of time in developmental math at all. In fact, um, I, yeah, I don't, I, you know, memory on that is not so clear. But um, when I went into college, a lot of folks who went from public school into college, they had to spend a lot of time in developmental um, classes, and I did not. So, you know, that did help um, eventually. That's great. So one of the things that I think about as a mom who homeschools is building confidence in my kids. And I feel like your last uh, response, you touched on it. You were in extracurricular activities, you volunteered, and those particular things often help build confidence in other areas of a person's life that if you were going to a traditional school, you would have, you know, opportunities that kind of cause you to engage with other people in, in a similar way. So would you, could you kind of give us some ways where your homeschool experience and your relationship with your mom and your grandma, how that really helped build your confidence and, you know, make you into the confident person that you are now? Sure. So um, in homeschool, because of, you know, the interactions, um, like I said, I was doing volunteering and did do Bible education. I also did volunteering at a local hospital. So I think I was like 14, 15, um, not, not a candy striper, but it was, you know, volunteering at a hospital. And um, my interaction with adults in a working environment, in a professional environment started when I was like 14, 15. So when I got to high school, no, when I got to college and I graduated and I entered the workforce, interacting with adults, it wasn't something all that new. And um, I feel, and then just from my observation, when I look at college kid, not college, high school kids and public schools, the interaction between the kids and adults, it, it's very institutionalized from what I see. And um, I don't, then that just seems that's just interesting to me. It's just a very institutionalized relationship. Um, not inmates exactly, but the, <laughs> <laughs> not, not exactly, but you know, just the relationship and the dynamic is such that it's just interesting. And then they go with that into college and, you know, different things, you know, pressures of college and life and, and then work environment. I can't speak on that, but I'm just grateful that I've had the interaction with adults, um, was introduced to working with adults in a professional environment when I was super young, of course, when things happened or things didn't go as expected, you know, my mom and, you know, different ones were there and I could ask questions. And um, so that ha definitely has helped me build my confidence early. Um, yeah, that definitely has been a confidence builder and helped me build my confidence early um, when it comes to how to conduct myself in a professional environment. That's that's amazing. And I just want to say for those people who, you know, often hear people talk about public school as an institution, the reason why it's often referred to that is because when public school was first mandated, it was really, it had a factory worker background. They were basically trying to help kids be better at the assembly line. And so it really does have that foundation of an actual institution. And so that kind of is why I laugh because sometimes people don't think of that when they think of public school. They're like, oh, you know, it's different. Um, you know, school was just to help kids educate them so that they could be successful adults. And that really wasn't the root of it. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, my time in it from elementary to middle school, I felt oppressed. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not surprised that, you know, and yeah, and just the thinking that they encouraged is very, um, well, I'm grateful I had a different um, choice, so interesting. Right, it, yeah. it can be, think inside this box, you know, um, kind of like a training for a certain thought process rather than think on your own, come up with your own opinions, um, recognize bias. So, so those are some differences that do exist I would love to say that things have gotten better, but it really depends on the, the school itself. Um, and so 
as a parent, when you are trying to vet where your child goes to school, that's something that you have to look at. You know, there are different schools that actually promote self-directed education. So if you want your child to think on their own, their own, that would actually be a specific model of school and not all schools actually provide that. Cool. So I think, um, you know, just hearing your experience, it, it definitely is eye opening because I think of, you know, being a young student growing up on my own and I just kind of, I love school and I just took it for granted. I, I was good at reproducing what was asked of me and I was comfortable with that. And so as an adult, I have had to break away for some, from, for some of those thoughts in order to be successful as an entrepreneur. And I feel like if I had a homeschool background, that could actually help more with an entrepreneurial mindset. And I know that, you know, everything that you do isn't entrepreneurial, but I know that you also have um, an entrepreneur um you do different things as an entrepreneur as well. Can you kind of describe how the homeschool um, setting kind of prepared you for that um, as a foundation? So homeschool gave me a foundation of knowing that all things, all skills are learnable. So some people go into their profession thinking they can only be that profession, um, especially if it's a profession that can be identity consuming, like, you know, nurse, teacher, doctor, they feel like they have to be nurse, teacher, doctor for the rest of their life. But thankfully, um, I know that that's not true. So when I, um, so when I decided, you know, what I wanted to do with my life or career and, you know, where I wanted to go to college, my mom was a nurse and she said that she would pay for school if I too became a nurse. So that, that was my decision process. And um, so I went with that. And then when I got another round of student loans and my husband, I was married by this time, my husband, um, he had read Dave Ramsey and you were like, you know what, we can knock these student loans out if we hit them with an extra thousand a month. And um, I was like, okay, that would be great. But, you know, I also like to get my nails done and all this other sort of thing. So um, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to come up with extra income, um, but I didn't want to work extra shifts. Again, being conservative with my energy, emotional energy and whatnot. And I wanted to work from home. You know, I didn't want to make, you know, extra money working shifts out of, you know, my home. So I was started thinking, you know, what else can I do outside of the box? And I thought about what I liked, what I enjoyed. And, um, you know, I've also had examples of friends who started a virtual assistant business in 2007, uh, 2007 and actually 2001 around when I graduated, I had friends who went into online marketing, flipping URLs. So in any case, I knew it was within my realm of possibility to earn money from home online um, via online marketing. So um, yeah, that's where I started. I um, started teaching people. Um, I started learning a little bit more about how to use social media beyond watching cat videos. Um, I was well <laughs> familiar with that. Um, so beyond watching cat videos, I started to learn how to use it professionally and to market and um, I had a cousin who started a business in 2009, getting her clients online. So I started really paying attention to online marketing, um, you know, about 10 years ago with that. So, yeah. So in 2016, I started, you know, social media management. And then um, from there, I realized that my client wins and my wins look like connecting people with folks who already have uh, platforms of their best buyers. I guess you would say influencer marketing. But I got my mm -hmm. best clients from after I, you know, spoke at a conference or, you know, people found me via a guest blog or um, on someone else's platform is how folks found, found me. And so I started helping my clients do the same, um, you know, going into Facebook groups that have their best buyers and being helpful and collaborating with um, the Facebook group host and doing lives and um, getting on podcasts. And um, so, yeah, so now that's where I focus on helping folks. Terrific. It sounds like, you know, you were a go-getter from the start and you were able to recognize a need and then use your personal skills in order to fulfill that need. So I think what you said directly parallels um, my life. And I, and I want to bring it up just because I think there are so many people who struggle with their student loans. And like you, um, when it was time for me to pay them back, I was married. 
and my husband also had student loans. So we didn't want to just continue to add extra debt. And we didn't want to just have to live in an apartment for endless amount of years. So we said, you know, how do we pay off these loans? And so I was able to aggressively find some side hustles, as we call them, to pay off my student loans. And I think, you know, just hearing you talk about it, it's doable. Mm -hmm. So, so many people sometimes make it seem like it's just a cloud over our heads that we can't go beyond. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of education and why I think college is important because people can develop a discipline. For people who are homeschooled, sometimes they already have that discipline. For me, I developed the discipline in college to be able to self-motivate. And I think that helped me be able to pay off my student loans. Mm. And so I want parents to know that investing in that education can actually be profitable because, and it's not always because of the academics you learn, it's, it's a discipline. It's, you know, learning how to prioritize your time, you know, and other things. And that can help you be successful in the long run to help you pay off those loans. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I love the way you said, you know, the self, um, self-motivation and um, self-discipline. I, again, because I was homeschooled, um, I wasn't spoon fed information. Um, I had to go out and get it. And, um, and I find to be quite honest, even in business, some people who decide to start their own thing, they're still in that mentality of waiting to be told the next step. And if the next step isn't clearly laid out for them, sometimes their motivation to go get the first step or go figure it out or go access the resources they need to get to where they need to go to even start, sometimes that motivation isn't um, there. And how people figure that out, how people get that discipline, whether it's homeschooling or college, um, it's just important to get that skill. Um, but definitely, you know, if you don't have that skill and you decide to start your own thing or start your own business, um, I've definitely seen people uh, struggle with that. Right, right. So, I mean, it's so, <laughs> it sounds like you just had such a rich experience and it sounds like it was very beneficial and encouraging for you. And I love that. For parents who are like, I really want to homeschool my child, but I feel like, um, you know, perhaps they're a single parent or, and they, they don't see how they could do it. Do you have any words of wisdom? Um, so my mom was a home, was, um, homeschooled and she was a single parent. So, um, I, you know, and I won't say, you know, everything is for everybody. I mean, being an entrepreneur isn't for everyone. Being a nurse isn't for everybody. Um, homeschooling isn't for all families, but, um, I, especially, especially now, I think with the influence that we know that kids can absorb from environments, um, whether it's, I don't know if, what the term is, but um, especially um, creativity. Sometimes, you know, their creativity can be hampered by an interaction with a teacher that's not necessarily so great. And some, oh, creativity scars. Um, I don't know if you're a reader of Brene Brown, but I invite all families, everybody to read Brene Brown. And she talks about um, how when we're first introduced to shame and you know, we get creativity scars and a lot of those happen in school, in the school environment um, with teachers that aren't so great. And, um, you know, that expense emotionally on your child, um, definitely consider that expense when you're considering other expenses um, and weighing decisions. And yeah, I definitely have shame scars that I can direct, um, I can link directly to school experiences. And again, thank goodness my mom brought me out of that experience when she did um, in enough time to be able to, um, for me to continue my development normally. Um, again, if I wasn't able to control my environment, around you know age 14 and beyond i honestly don't know how much of a contributing citizen i would have had the energy emotional energy to be or to grow into um i don't know how that would have turned out so um there are all sorts of expenses that we need to consider and yeah definitely think about um you know creativity scars and 
um, you know, being able to control the emotional development of your child in relationship to other things that are important to your family. Mm, I think I love that term, creativity scars. I haven't read that particular um, book and I haven't heard that particular thought, but I, I definitely can relate to it in my own experience. And it's just, you know, many of us can look back in our past and, and feel that like the words creativity scars are just emotional and, and you could feel it as you said it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, wow, you know, I definitely will be looking that up just so I could learn more because I feel like there is a segment of the population who are educators who are pushing towards social emotional learning within the school system. You would think that it would be native <laughs> to the whole curriculum, the whole education process. Process, but it's not. It's actually a new movement that's going on in many school systems. And so um, being able to, as a parent, being able to understand to help your kids cope with that is important. And so kudos to your mom for recognizing and feeling the uh, self-awareness and the feeling like she had the ability to homeschool you, even though she was a, a single mom, because you know, I'm glad that you're sharing that with us because I feel like in my podcast, I've definitely been asked what, um, you know, what can single moms do to make it work? And of course, I can give people my, my general idea and my understanding, but I, I haven't actually lived it. And so for you to share it from a firsthand perspective is golden. So for you single moms out there trying to make it work, this is definitely a story that, um, you know, they, they made it work. And so when you are dedicated and you want to do it and you may have to be creative, you know, this is where you bring in that creativity. You, you look at your resources and you come up with a model that works for you. My um, motto for homeschooling is always be willing to be flexible. And it sounds like your mom lived that 100%. Yes. And again, you know, know, know your child, know, um, you know, know your child. And um, like you said, know your resources. And, you know, from there, you'll, you know, definitely, I, I definitely know that parents are, um, you know, the best judge of what, is best, you know, also gut, you know, feel, you know, gut reaction. Um, there's not, there's not a lot that I want to say because I am not a mom. Um, but in watching, you know, how my mom made decisions, um, she definitely did it with, um, seeking what was best for me. So definitely a lot of self-sacrifice on her part. Um, and, um, it wasn't easy. It wasn't all walks in the park and, um, you know, but it it was doable. Right, right. That's amazing. Do you have any, um, you mentioned that one book, but I'm wondering, do you have any books that may come to mind that are must-reads for Black and Brown young people? Um, Michelle Obama's Becoming, um, most definitely. Um, uh, for, I, so I did it via an audio. I first read um, Becoming by Michelle Obama via audio and having her words in my ear made me want to get the Kindle book. And so um, I later saw how thick the physical book was. And so I think if I first saw the physical book, I would maybe like, ah, oh, never mind. But in any case, um, the audio really is like a workbook if you want it to be that for you. I feel as though that should be a required course in high schools. Um, mm -hmm. reading the book, I feel, well, one, I feel like the book could be an entire curriculum, but, um, it's, it, it's a, it's a, how it's a, I, I'm going to just jumble my words, but, um, it would be that because it talks about, um, why social capital is challenging for us to gather up for ourselves. Um, you know, how social capital can start to be built when you don't have it, you know, originally, I mean, she lays out the step-by-steps how-tos that led her from, you know, South Side of Chicago to where we all know her from. 
and um, the different people who helped her and the different ask for help she made and the different ones who stand it up and advocated for her. And, you know, mainly her mom, you know, stood out to me as like an advocate for her child. And, you know, if her mom never stood up and advocated for her, would she be who she is? We don't know. Um, and she kind of alludes to what she thinks about that in the book. But um, yeah, it would be that. That's, wow. So I listened to the audio too, because I, <laughs> I like to hear people tell their story in their own words, because I feel like there's a, a power that comes from hearing it directly from that person. And when I listened to it, I was really listening to it for myself, but being a homeschool parent, my kids, <laughs> they were around, so they listened to it too. And I think regardless of where a person's background is from, from she made herself relatable and down to earth. And I felt like after listening or reading her, her book, it made me feel like even if I haven't had an easy linear path, if I put certain things in place, I can achieve whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And for some people that will come from the people that's in their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. But for others, you may have to draw strength from reading someone's story. Mm -hmm. That may be your, your mentor from, you know, from a book. It may not happen in person with real life re relationships. So you have to take those benefits and the advice and different information that's provided in a book. And you have to apply, see how it applies to your life and go forth. Yeah. And so I love that you brought up her book because I could definitely see the impact that it's had on my own life. Yeah. Yeah. And just also her intention, intentionality behind creating networks and environments that would support her. Um, you know, nothing was accidental. She did, she, she, I mean, I can't remember a phrase. And then like, and then all of a sudden this framework of helpful people just showed up in a crowd at my doorstep. Um, that's not what the book shows. I mean, you know, so I definitely, yeah, her create her, um, yeah, intentionality about creating um, professional networks and, um, you know, support networks, uh, for her and, um, really definitely also stood out as a step-by-step for folks who are able to extrapolate that to their personal lives, if you're able to do that, um, that would be wonderful. But um, yeah, it was it was a great book. I'm glad to hear those are what, and that your little ones <laughs> are also listening to that. That's also great. Yeah, and I I truly believe that if you want your kids to become readers, they have to see you reading. Mm -hmm. And like most entrepreneurs, you know, I'm busy. So I can't always just have an infinite amount of time to just sit and read. So I try to find creative ways to read while I may be doing something else like driving. Because, you know, as a parent, especially when your kids are homeschooled, they tend to have all these extracurricular activities. So you're still like a shuttle bus. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it could be listening in the car together. But you do have to utilize your time wisely to be able to still gain that information. Yep. <laughs> so um, I have one more question for you. Um, and the question is really, what do you think is the biggest misconception about homeschool? Um, I think so. The biggest misconception I feel is though, you know, homeschoolers are socially maladjusted. Um, I, you know, I have had people who said, you know, as I talk to them and they're like, find out that I was homeschooled in high school and middle school and whatnot. They're like, wow, I couldn't tell that you're a homeschooler. And it's like, really, what does that mean? So, um, <laughs> or you don't act like a homeschooler. Um, so I think that, um, yeah, I think it's that. And, um, again, there are various, again, when I was homeschooled almost 20 years ago. So now um, the resources that are available and the how many, of course, families of color who are doing it now. It, back then, there weren't a ton of families of color who were homeschooling their kids. Now, there, this seems like there's like so much has changed and it's great and it's wonderful. So um, I think, yeah, a misconception would be that homeschoolers are, you know, not necessarily well-adjusted emotionally or socially. And that is... 
a big, huge myth. Wow. You're, you're absolutely right. And I love that, you know, you're living proof that that is not the case. So congratulations for all that you have achieved and that you are achieving because it's, you know, it's a continuum. It's not, you know, you have arrived to this certain moment, but I loved hearing your story. And as a parent who is in this journey right now, it was reassuring mm. to hear your words and to learn about your journey as a homeschooled student. So thank you for, for sharing and being honest about, you know, the path that has taken you. You're most welcome. Thank you for um, allowing me to share the story. And again, um, yeah, that background, it was the best foundation I could have asked for, for going into college. I started with um, community college. I later got my bachelor's, but in community college, I saw the folks who went through public school and I was grateful once again. Um, I did not spend, to recap, did not spend a whole lot of time with developmental classes. Um, a lot of folks were used to being spoon fed information when the college professors would just give us the pages of of um, what we're supposed to read and then say, "Go be well." Um, I was able to take that and go and start my work, and other classmates were still looking at each other. So it was just um, I just like I said, it was um, definitely has and then going forward, you know sometimes your job orientations aren't what they should be. Can you go and access information on your own? Are you still waiting to be spoon fed information? So um, yeah, thank you for allowing me to share uh, the after <laughs> of um, what can happen, you know, after you go through that journey. And I um, it's hope is hope help is helpful. And if anyone has any questions, you know, they feel free to reach out to me. Um, I know you'll have my information <laughs> in the show notes. So yeah. Yes. And if you could, um, you know, just take the time to tell people, because you you do a variety of things. So um, let them know what, what platform they can find you and how they can follow you. And, you know, just give the people the information. I definitely will type it up for the show notes, um, but tell them how to connect with you. Sure. So, um, yeah, so you can reach me on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram and Twitter as at RN underscore solutions, R as in Robert and as in Nancy underscore solutions. And um, yeah, my email, I don't mind giving my email out. It's Amelia, A-M-E-L-I-A at solutions by Amelia.com. Uh, again, I have a few hats. If you need support with getting in front of the right people with the right message, I'm happy to help you and would love to connect with you over on LinkedIn. And I'm there as Amelia J. Roberts. Terrific. Thank you so much. I, you know, I know for certain that there are parents who have been waiting to hear this. Um, I, I get a lot of questions from parents and this is one of the questions about, you know, I kind of touched on it about, you know, being a single mom, how will my kid be, you know, one thing that you didn't quite um, mention, and I'm assuming you don't have siblings, but do you have siblings? Yes, I have an older sibling who has special needs and uh, my mom actually brought him into homeschooling while, um, yeah, um, I think maybe like a year after he was like sort of like in high school by that point, um, a little ahead of me, but yeah, he brought, yeah, he was right into homeschooling and, um, yeah, so that was a, <laughs> that was a challenging dynamic. Um, but yeah, she decided, you know, that was what he needed. So that was, she brought him and, um, that was quite an undertaking for her. But um, wow. but he survived that <laughs> as well, <laughs> and and so does she. But um, yeah, that's terrific. I mean, kudos to your mom because you know to hear that she did it, you know, as a single parent is you know, they, they say the word like a unicorn, yeah. like, wow, you know, um, I'm definitely in awe, but it just goes to show that if this is best for your kids, you'll find a way to make it happen if that's what you feel on the inside. So I, I love that, um, that you were so candid and transparent with us. And so I thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I am... 
All right. So I was on your podcast um, a couple months ago, and I will definitely link that in the show notes as well. But can you tell everybody where they can find your podcast and what your podcast is about? Sure. So my podcast, and thank you so much for joining us and sharing um, the story of patient advocacy. That was super helpful. Um, my podcast is called the business of what well, was called nurse marketing, the business of nursing. And I started that because a lot of folks were asking me, you know, how is it that you're a nurse and you can also learn marketing? How is it you're a nurse? You can also learn about this. And again, so many people who are in roles like teachers, you know, mothers, nurses are like, how can you learn other things if you're a mom? <laughs> but in any case, um, I started sharing the stories of different people who are doing different things in nursing and beyond. Um, different folks who are doing interesting things like patient advocacy, um, like, um, like different sub topic, subjects that I wanted nurses to know about that were going on outside of the hospital walls. So if you know somebody who's in healthcare, who's thinking about um, starting a new chapter and wants to make a pivot and they want to do so with grace and ease, I definitely invite them to head over to thebusinessofnursing.com and check out my podcast. Yes, please do. It is incredible. So thank you so much for sharing so many nuggets with us. And we just appreciate you. We appreciate you for giving us your time. Thank you for having this platform.